Welcome back, shalligators. I miss you, I just miss you guys so much. I can't get enough, I can't get enough. I'm gonna blow your phone up with notifications about new videos. Listen, last time we talked about Taylor Swift and her weird feuds with Sabrina Carpenter, Lana Del Rey, Olivia Rodrigo, Charlie XCX, and I mean, it's the more you dig, the more you uncover. You're like, what is up with this girl? And we talked a lot about it in the comments and you guys had some really like fascinating insights. I mean, some of them were like, she's a narcissist and a narcissist is always going to view everyone else as just an extension of them. So when Sabrina Carpenter does a skims campaign with Taylor's mortal enemy, Kim Kardashian, Taylor sees it as like a direct move on her. And it's like, it's not. Sabrina's living her own life. Yeah, but Taylor doesn't view people through that lens. She's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, they're just characters in my play. No one has their own play. Everyone, everyone's just all in mine, right? I'm gonna break down some of your other insights, but today we're gonna talk about what I believe to be Taylor's true mortal wound. And one of my best friends, Mandy Brooke Official, follow her on Instagram, we've been talking about this, and she kind of like illuminated this for me. I was like, oh my God, yes, duh. It's, Taylor is so on the top, there's nowhere to go but down. And that terror is really what is driving her. Now you could look at that and be like, I have no idea how this relates to my life. Okay, I think for a lot of us alpha females, we don't have a fear of failure. We might have a fear of success. Or even if we're like, no, 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 I wanna be successful. When you are successful, does it feel the way you think? Is there a Taylorian terror that's associated with it that you're like, what the fuck now? When is the other shoe gonna drop? When is he gonna leave me? When is that new intern gonna come for my position? When am I gonna get fat again? When am I not gonna be the favorite daughter anymore? How do you deal with that? Is there a way or is this just the natural byproduct of success that you are always going to be kind of unhinged and constantly scrambling to like hold on to your place? How do you actually enjoy success? I'm gonna break it all down. We're gonna get into it. You know what I find to be a successful way of moving through the world as a woman? Um, You know, one thing that makes me feel successful as a woman is destroying the lives of men. I do. And I'm trying to get more creative about this, like, you know, buy their name as a domain name and then make a dummy website that heavily implies they have strong desires to become a mime. You like that, Jeff? Another easier way to destroy the life of a man is to smell incredible. Scent is the number one sense tied to memory. And you know this, you smell something and instantly you're back in some moment. You can be that moment and you can do it with Scentbird. So I am a big fragrance person. I've kind of gotten into fragrance more over the years. I was always like, no, I have my signature fragrance. Girl, mix it up. You don't eat one type of food. You don't wear one dress. I have been wearing this for three days, I'm sorry. Have, try all the fragrances that are out there and there are so many. And I live in a small town, we don't have the big stores that are gonna carry really cool fragrances. So, so Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service. You get to choose new scents every month and your first month is $8. The next months are $16.95. I mean, that is so much cheaper than a rollerball. You know, you're gonna get an Ulta or Sephora. Let me show you what I got this month. Okay, they come in these pretty little pouches. Does it look like poison? Oh. And you can take it out and see what, this is Montal called Lucky Candy. I like that. Ooh, I like that. And then there's cards that explain what every one of them are. White flowers, ooh, coconut, marshmallow, toffee. This is gonna make a man want to eat you. And then you eat his life up right back, girl. That's what you do. This one is called Sunsets in Capri. I mean, right there, the name, like I'm in, like say less. Does it smell like a man's Amex Black? This one is from Histoire de Parfum. My, my accent's bad, but my nose is good. Mm. Oh, wow. This is rose, saffron, and leather. It smells, it smells like a woman who owns an art gallery and rents Vespas by the sea in Spain. Her name is Colette. She has been drawn nude by many artists. I love it. So listen, experiment. 
personalized, this is sustainable, it's affordable, it's customizable. So if you wanna try some of the 700 fragrances that Scentbird has available without getting like stuck with some giant bottle of cool water, or I don't even know. Give Scentbird a shot and you can save 55% with my code Shallon55 off. Scan the QR code, click the link down below and you're gonna get your first month for only $8. So little risk here. It's so much easier to ruin a man's life when you smell good. Okay. Taylor, who's she been ruining lately? Uh, yeah, all right, okay. So her mortal wound is I'm gonna become irrelevant. And listen, she's 35 years old. That is, that is not actually old, but it's when society loves to decide that you're old. You know, did you ever see uh, the Amy Schumer sketch, Last Fuckable Day? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like society has a day where it's like, well, that was her last fuckable day and she can, she can fuck off and die right now. Like there's, there's no more use for her in society. I wonder if Taylor's scary age is approaching either from a strategic standpoint, like, yeah, there's, there's not a lot of 40 year old pop stars shaking their ass out there. Or if this is just like her own personal demon. You know, it's interesting. We look at celebrities especially like Taylor. And we think like, oh, she's so strategic. She's everything she does has a reason and a motive. She's just a person. You know, at the end of the day, I'm extremely strategic. I'm also very emotional. I'm a creative person and I'm a public person. So is she. We're not the same. I know she's, I get it. I get it. But I am emotional and I'm driven by my own demons. So are you. And I know you're very smart and strategic as well. So yeah, celebrities can have their like on paper plan, but they're still people. And in fact, they're the worst people in society because they're crazy as fuck. They're so neurotic. They're so ego driven. And as we have talked about Taylor and other celebs like Justin Bieber, they are frozen in time at the age where fame happened because yes, fame is a type of trauma, right? I'm gonna move this, it's driving me nuts. Ah, I can get loose with all my vitriol. And again, we were looking, we were looking at the last video, like the feuds she has with these with these new singers, like how could she possibly be pressed and threatened about Sabrina Carpenter? If you look at her through the lens of a 15 year old, you're like, oh, okay. How could Taylor possibly think that she's gonna like become irrelevant? Like even if she stopped making music today, my friend Mandy even said, she's like, she's bigger than Michael Jackson. Like she is. And that would just go on forever. She's up there with like Marilyn and Audrey Hepburn. Like she, she, is and so like why is she so afraid that everyone's going to forget about her which clearly is what is driving these petty vendettis look at a 15 year old what is the worst thing that can happen to a high school girl she's unpopular she's invisible and it's interesting as women how our experience in this world starts and ends at the same place with invisibility hoping to be noticed by men, by society, to be taken seriously. Like, you know, my mom's obviously older than me, shocker. And she, her and her friends have discussed that. Like when you get to a certain age, it's like people kind of look right past you. No one's like, hmm, like looking you up and down. They don't take you as seriously. It's like, oh, okay. They're dismissive. Is it because your, your fuckable days are gone? I, and teenage girls feel the same way kind of and I've always thought like when I was maybe older I would like sort of like foster or adopt like a teenage girl just because I, I am a teenage girl constantly and I thought you know that's that's like a good match I think like people who are disenfranchised by society the highest like instances of like gayness of girls being like I'm a lesbian it's like yeah when boys aren't paying attention to you no shit you feel like a lesbian you're like well Pat's paying attention to me okay Neat. It's interesting. It's interesting when you look at the data. So when you look at Taylor through the lens of a 15 year old, absolutely she's afraid of becoming irrelevant. Is this rooted in logic? No. But at this point, I don't know what she is doing that's logical. Do you know what I mean? Not that her career isn't thriving, like of course, and the way she markets herself is very smart and strategic, but it's like, what is this building towards? Where is she going with all this? Does she really want to be this famous forever? That sounds awful. But you guys saw on my Instagram, I hung out with uh, Tana Monjo this week in, in Hawaii. 
we literally bonded as all female females bond in line for the bathroom at our <laughs> resort in Hawaii and just became like fast friends. She's fantastic. But we, I mean, when we would just sit and have a drink, teenage girl after teenage girl would come up and be like, I'm so sorry to bother you. And she is the most gracious, genuinely, genuinely gracious person. And she's like, yes, come on. Like, so sweet. If you see her, say hi. But I'm like, damn, is this, is this how it always is? She's like, oh, every two seconds. Yeah. And she wasn't like bitchy at all. She was like, yeah, I mean, this is just kind of how it is. And I'm like, fuck, dude. She's like, yeah, I can't really go to the grocery store. Like, oh, and like Taylor is right. Just this juggernaut of fame. And it's like, you want that? Like, yes, a little fame. I don't know. It's like, you want that bad enough that you're going to risk your reputation, your favorite word to emulate these other up and comers. Like how long do you want to stay on the top here? And again, why? Why? There's no other act for you. You want to write books. You want to start a foundation. Do you want to do something to give back, girl? Try it. Try it. I volunteer at a food bank two or three times a week serving food to the homeless. I don't, like, if I can do it, you can do it. You can start a foundation. It's a fucking tax shelter, dude. But it's like, what's the next iteration? And if she has one, let's look at it this way. If you're like, oh, no, no, she's got a plan. Then why is she acting this way? She's acting like someone without a plan right? She's acting like someone with everything to lose. And you're like, are you like, how? okay. <laughs> Why are you this nervous that you have to while out like this Taylor? But it's an interesting way to look at success. And I think when we're talking about people who give advice, we're always talking about how to get there, how to get there, the climb, the climb, the climb. There's not a lot of advice on what to do when you make it. And there's a question of now what? I got the degree. I published the book. I got married. I mean, do you just set a new goal and you start a climb all over again? That's not, honestly, that's not a bad strategy. But if we continually do that, we run ourselves ragged, we don't stop to smell the roses, and therefore our summits, when we get to the top of this peak, it doesn't mean a hill of beans, because it's just, you're just checking it off the box. The climb is what's satisfying. It, Miley said it, Miley said it. It's true. I mean, when I think of my books that I've published, I don't remember the day it came out. I sort of remember my book signings. What I remember is writing them. I remember writing them, sitting in a Starbucks, like all day long writing. And it's like, that was the cool shit. That was the best part. It was the climb. It was the day I signed the contract, not the day the book that came out. It's interesting. So how do you enjoy success? And how do you not inhabit the Taylor mindset of like mind and you're like a dragon sitting on its eggs hoarding this success because that is no success at all when you're in that that scarcity mindset and clearly that's what she has you can tell me no she's the biggest star in the world look how she acts she might know that she is does she feel this ah, I don't know I don't know a lot of truly happy people who are that fucking petty. I was going to say maybe me, <laughs> but I'm not truly happy and I'm not truly petty. So there we go. <laughs> okay. If she is in this constant scarcity mindset, like we don't want to be there, right? We don't want to get to the top just to be like trying to fend off everyone. But we also don't want to just constantly have to like, Okay, I'm, I'm the CFO of this company. Time to quit. Time, time to go to a new one. Okay, well, I have a baby and they're saying, let, let's do another. Like, blah, blah, blah. like, we can't constantly be chasing the dragon like that. What I think it comes down to is, have you bothered to define success? We are very good at quantifying and getting very granular about failure. <laughs> oh, I know what failure feels like. <laughs> no, it feels like it's embarrassment. 
It's disappointment, like that full body disappointment. It's someone walking out of my life. It's me walking out of an office because I got fired. It's something I released failing and selling under however many units. We can picture failure like a Pinterest board come to life and it's dancing in front of us. We're like, hello, you are so descriptive. And I've, I've flushed out every little detail of you. When we think about success, we're like, huh, um, money? Or like love, a hus husband, a book? Yeah. We do not get as granular about this. And what we very much miss out on doing is identifying the feelings below success. Even if we're like, oh, I, Jalen, maybe some people like that. I know what success looks like. I have the Pinterest board. I have the vision board. I have the this and that. Good. Okay, good. You're off to a great start. Do you have the feelings? If you ask people, what are you trying to manifest? You know, I'm big into manifesting. I just did my retreat with Laura St. John. By the way, she has a free seven day manifesting course. It's free. Sign up for it. You can binge it. You can do it at any old time. I'll put the link right down there in the bio. Um, yeah, sign up for it. Um, she's also doing workshops all the time. Like, just get on her list and there's so much to learn. Anyway, you might know what you want success to look like, but do you know what you want it to feel like? Well, yeah, I want to feel rich. Okay, okay. It's a great place to start. Who doesn't want to be rich? What does rich mean to you? What does rich represent? How do you understand? You're like, ah, I don't know. Okay, here's what you do. I, we're gonna do a little visualization exercise, okay? You can close your eyes if you want. I want you to picture the perfect scene in your mind. I did this little visualization with myself when I just graduated from college and I didn't know where to move. And I could, you know, the world is my oyster. I could go anywhere. I'm like, do I wanna be in the country? Do I wanna be in an island? Do I wanna stay in my hometown in SoCal? Do I wanna be in a city? And I, was, and, and I had absolutely no idea where I wanted to work. And so I'm like, okay, let me, let me just picture just in flashes, just in flashes, the perfect life, my perfect life right now. And I pictured me like in a city, I'm like in glamorous clothes and I'm like dashing across the street. Cause you know, chick lit books, girls are always like running across the street with like a baguette, always with the baguettes, right? Or a bicycle with also the baguettes. And I was like, no, 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 let's go deeper than this. How do I feel? How do I feel? The number one feeling that I had underneath that vision, what it all added up to was I'm in the center of the action. That was the feeling. I am in the heart of it. And I grew up in Southern California and then I went to kind of a sleepy-ish college town. I went to Cal Poly up in Northern California. It's a small town, it's very agriculture, it's slow. It's a slow life. I did not want the slow life. I wanted the fast life. And so when I pictured my future, that was like huge for me, huge. I wanna be where the action is. I wanna be where the cool people are. And you could be like, that's kind of shallow. I know that, I am shallow. But that's what was in my heart. And that started out as like a, a categorization system for other things. Like, okay, so I'm not staying in my hometown of Southern California. Maybe I would go to San Francisco or LA, okay, but at least we've narrowed it down to cities. Um, I was thinking about becoming a school psychologist. No, not where the action is, not action that I wanna be a part of, so we cut that out. And I would just slowly winnow it down to I'm like, I wanna be in, if I'm gonna be in a big city, I wanna be in the biggest city. I wanna be in New York. And if I wanna be where the action is, as a girl, as a young glamorous girl, that's fashion, that's magazines. That's where I want to be. But I was able to get there by looking at the feeling first. What is the feeling I'm chasing here? And I go back to this exercise a lot when I'm like, I don't know, even if it's like, I don't know where I want to go on vacation. Okay. What do you want to feel? Well, no, I should think about the weather. And no. What do I want to feel? And in Hawaii, you know what I wanted to feel? Bored. I wanted to get good and bored and relaxed and read and I wanted to feel unpressured to do anything or be anywhere or wear anything. I just wanted to drift around. And so I'm like, okay, Hawaii, it's gonna be expensive, it's a trek, but it's worth it because that will nail how I'm feeling. It's not going to the south of France right now, it's not going to Saint-Tropez, I'm not gonna be bored there. That was what I was after. 
And I say this because you're like, oh, what are we talking about? How do we enjoy success? What the fuck is success? What are you chasing? And why? What do you want to feel? Let's go back to money. Well, I want to feel rich. Mm -mm. What, is, what is below that? Rich means I feel autonomous. I don't have to listen to my family anymore because they're not supporting me. I feel unbothered. Fuck you guys. I don't have to do anything that anybody else is doing. Maybe you feel powerful. Now I can treat my friends. Now I can change the world. We think like, well, rich, this means the same thing to everyone. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Moving to New York City, some people move there because they want to be anonymous. I'm, I'm too famous in my little small town. Everyone knows my business. It's just this cousin yapping, that girl yapping. I need to go someplace where no one knows me. I had the exact opposite motivation to go there. I'm going to go there and I'm going to be an it girl. Everyone will know me. I'm going to climb this ladder. So the same moves can have completely different motivations and therefore, completely different definitions of success. That person who wants to be anonymous would hate my version of success, even though we're both on the same path in New York City and vice versa. I would hate theirs. I'm a nobody here. <laughs> huh. I can be a nobody in a much bigger house. I'm leaving. So when you think about like, I have to hold on to this success, what is the feeling you think you need to hold on to? And I'm not saying you don't, but what is that feeling? Relevancy, power, your parents are proud of you, you are proud of you, you have a place in this world, you have a voice, you're appreciated. Hey, I can't leave this job. People here appreciate me for me. And if I'm not at this company, no one else is gonna see these gifts. No one's gonna appreciate me. If I leave this relationship, I feel protected here. Maybe the way you feel Maybe success is defined as safe. You feel safe and anchored. But there's something under there. And it's your job to get to it. Because until you do, you are either going to be chasing the dragon like Taylor, hoarding, or you're going to be constantly chasing a new dragon, a new climb, a new this, new, 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 new. Because you're chasing some high. What is under there? What do you truly want? And here's the good news. There's no right or wrong answer. Like the example of me moving to New York. I wanted to be an it girl. Someone else wants to be anonymous. Amazing. Neither one of them is right. Neither one of them is wrong. They're just authentic and inauthentic. And if you don't have that kind of categorization system, if you don't even know why you're doing the things that you're doing, like really deep soul know what you're after, well, fuck, of course you're going to be worried that people are going to take it from you or it's going to collapse tomorrow or he's going to leave because you don't even understand the feelings that you need to have. And so you have no plan to either maintain or replicate that feeling. Let's say that you, you won't leave a relationship or you're afraid your guy's going to leave because you won't feel safe. He makes you feel protected. He anchors you. He gives you an identity. You need to start replicating those feelings. You can absolutely have that be your motivation for staying in a relationship, but you need to learn how to copy paste into all these other categories of your life. Okay, he gives me meaning. What else can I do that gives me meaning that isn't contingent on another person staying in my life and still wanting to have sex with me? I could, I could volunteer. Why do you think I do it? Why do you think I do it? This gives me a place in the world. This gives me value apart from how I look, what I'm saying on the internet, I don't speak a word. I have value when I do that. And I get done at the end and I'm exhausted and I'm usually crying because I'm sad about it. But it's like, I did something today and I, I mattered, I mattered. Let's go back to your relationship example. You feel safe and protected. It would probably also make you feel safe if you were earning your own money. If you were physically autonomous, are you in good shape? I mean, these things sound dumb, but they, they contribute. They add to this pile of that feeling. Do you put time and effort into your relationships with your family or your friends? Or is this man the only thing that you have in this world? Fucking change that. You need to start to change that. And so I look at Taylor and I'm like, 
obviously she's a very worthy, valuable person, but I wonder if she feels that way given how, again, petty and pressed she is all the time. Like if she thought she had relevancy in another way in these other categories, would she be after Sabrina Carpenter the way she is or Lana or whoever, Olivia Rodrigo? I don't know. And you, the pushback, not just for Taylor, but for our own lives is, well, <laughs> What is she gonna do to gain her own relevancy that's as big as being the world's biggest pop star? The good news is it doesn't work like that. Your ego actually doesn't work like that. I don't have to be a volunteer at the food bank on the same level that I'm a YouTuber. You just, a little of it equals a lot of it. it there is no proportions. It's pass fail. You do a little, you're like, oh, that's amazing. That's great. It keep it contributes. It contributes. That's wonderful. So maybe if she, and I'm not like making a sell for her to have kids, but for some people, it gives them a huge sense of relevance. I mean, your mom, like mom is God to a kid, right? There's no one bigger than mommy. Maybe if she had that, she'd be like, I don't need Twitter. Like, I don't need, I don't need fans. I've got this little fan right here and I'm obsessed with them. And that's actually all I need. I don't know, maybe not. I, again, this is not about like having kids, but it's about diversifying the portfolio. Diversify the portfolio. It's the number one financial rule, diversify. Spread your money around. Don't go all in on one things. Eggs in one basket, don't do it. So if she is, would do that from an emotional standpoint, and again, who knows? Maybe she does, and maybe like none of this is right, but I'm almost never wrong, so. If she is doing this, cool, I bet it would help. And it will help us, it will help us. You know what, it's not gonna hurt. It's not gonna hurt. And maybe you, you will gain data no matter what. If you're like, all right, yeah, it's bad that I'm like 100% reliant on my relationship to give me a feeling of safety and being anchored. Not really sure how this pickleball league is gonna help. Yes, it fucking will, okay, yes it will. Just try it. What are your other options? To live in this constant scarcity mindset and this fear state that everything you work for is gonna go away tomorrow? I, that kind of seems like it's just teaching your brain not to go for anything because this is a worse feeling than wanting. Huh. This feels worse because when you really do hone in on what those feelings are beneath, you might find that they are very easily achieved. You know what? I actually do feel very relevant and seen volunteering. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I need to be a YouTuber. But you, you might be surprised. I feel like, you know, yeah, like getting things back on track with my best friend. I mean, it really kind of puts my relationship with Jeff in perspective. Like he's annoying and our relationship is kind of toxic, but I was always just afraid to see it because I thought, oh no, if like I can't lose this or I'm never going to be able to replicate this feeling. Turns out... I can replicate feeling safe and valued and anchored by doing a lot of things. Maybe it is pickleball, but you don't know until you know. You don't know until you try. And the more data you have about what you need and why you need it and how easy it is to find out there, that's never going to be a bad thing. That is never going to be a bad thing. But beware, beware for the people and the situations that tell you it is. You don't want to go to that pickleball. You don't want to do that, honey. Stay with me. Oh, you don't want to look around for other jobs. People have their own vested interest. And people are never going to give you permission to make them less relevant. They are never going to incentivize you to need them less. That is human nature. That's human nature. So if you're waiting for that suggestion, you are, you got a long way ahead of you. This is something we have to do ourselves. No one's going to do it for us. No one is even maybe going to want us to do it. But if we don't, the good times won't feel as good and success isn't going to do what you think it's going to do. All it takes is just a little bit of visualization, listening and being still enough 
to let your psyche speak to you? What is she trying to say that you need? Again, there's no wrong answer. There's no wrong answer. And to find it probably is less of like a disaster. You know, it's less of a trek and a, and a journey than you think it's going to be. It's probably pretty easy to find in either micro or macro doses around your life. So sit with yourself. Define what success is, what it feels like, what the feelings are under there. And if you don't know, let's talk about it in the comments. If you're like, well, I know I, I, know I want to be married. Now that you say this, I'm like, do I know why? I don't know. Let's talk about it. We can figure it out. All right. I'll see you later, Shalligators. Remember, Laura has a seven-day free manifesting course. If you want, links down below. Sign up. It's great. I am obviously a huge fan of all her stuff. And I will see you next time. I'll see you later, Shalligators. And don't forget to save 55% on your new Scentbird subscription with my special code, link down below.